Yo, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of the Here's the Crack podcast. If you can follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, help us get into those charts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, leave a lovely comment. Tell us what this podcast means to you. If there's any funny bits, any guests, we'd love to hear about it. Just drop a comment. We're always watching. Let's get into the podcast. When you become officially bankrupt, it's like, you just, like, as if you feel your tattoo in your head. That's why I felt anyway. Because at the time, maybe wearing nice clothes, driving a nice car, all this. And yeah. then, like, you fuck off. My mum was, like, putting electric in my electric meter. Like, yeah. she was buying me shop and stuff. Yeah. So it was, like, embarrassment factor as well. It was cruise at the time in Victoria Square. I used to shop there. Yeah. Always into the brand Stone Island. Look at my wardrobe going well. I've these couple of Stone Island coats. Like, needs must. You know, I need to go on the eBay. And I've sold it for 250 so we're going like something in this. Here's the crack, here's the crack, here's the crack, here's the crack, here's the crack. Here's the crack. Here's the crack. Welcome back, I'm talking shit, I'm drinking wine, like and subscribe. Here's the crack. How's it going, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Here's the Crack podcast. Um, another podcast and our guest. So we've got David on, or David James Care, or DJK. Any of the above. Any of the above. Yeah, you can pick. But, um, We'll maybe get into like everything that you do and stuff. I think we'll kick off. Did you have an icebreaker? Yeah, we're gonna start doing an icebreaker question now. So yeah. <laughs> it's not a tough one. It's like we're testing this what's, out on you first. What's your go-to hangover feed or like cheap meal? Or? Uh probably an Ulster fry to be honest. There you go. I uh, like a hangover, like proper like Ulster fry, smoked bacon, scrambled egg, tater bread, sort of bread. Do you, uh, do you uh, have a pancake in your fry? Oh, why? Definitely. Fuck, I hate pancakes. Do you? I love them. Someone I said that to me. I was actually talking about this earlier. Like, I think pancakes should not be in a fucking fry. I just oh, I don't know what it is. Fried, yeah, on, I just, fried on the pan, no? Beans with them. Like. <laughs> yeah, I'm again. I just. Uh, pancakes are. On fried. this topic, right? We're completely off topic here. I had an Ormo, like an Ormo pancake the other day. And I, I had, you know, Sun Blessed. Yeah. You're familiar with the brand, right? I think they're quite lower tier. Whereas I had an Ormo pancake for the first time the other day, right? Nice and like crispy on the outside, but a wee bit like sort of like fluffy, but a bit like, I asked mum, I was like, what is that? Like, it's a bit like moist. And she was like, it's the yeast. And I was like, that's top tier. The 1.9 piece, they're a wee bit dearer than the sun bless, but see whenever you pop them in a a toaster. Well, you really, my, my missus when I go back in you get the, the, you get the, you get like. the 9p earth it like yeah. Ormo note that down we're just talking You're about sponsorships there so like Ormo yeah oh, here. <laughs> there you go I'll get it off yeah, 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 yeah. but uh, is there anything you don't have in your fry uh, only get my eggs scrambled don't like fried eggs seriously right? so that's the only type of egg you eat only boiled eggs we run an egg, egg and all I don't eat a fried egg yeah there yeah. you go so I don't like scrambled egg that much, I, I don't mind scrambled eggs and what, what a thing as well I was in England there maybe a month or two back I was in a Millwall match and um, before the match we called in there like a you know like a wee English cafe yeah. mm. and uh Obviously, got an English breakfast. Fucking terrible. Mm, that's the same. Compared to Ulster, Ulster chips, chips with, with fucking in the breakfast. Ah, yeah, English give you chips. We give you fried bread. You know, it's like I've never had chips on a fry, but I've had an evening tea where you have like bacon chips, sausages, and eggs. Egg. Like, yeah. well, that's yeah. just more or less what it is, isn't it? That's, that's a typical. Close off, that's right? a typical Northern Ireland. Mum's one in the cupboard, and what I, do I have here? And what can I throw <laughs> together? <laughs> like no other. What else is on the English fry? Like, it's not on this one. The Irish fry. Well, there's no potato bread, there's no soda bread, there's no <sighs> pancake. That's it's the like, best part. It's so. like just, well, not just fried a poor bread. man's. Black like, pudding. Aye, black pudding, white yeah. pudding, egg, bacon, Fuck. sausage, fried Fuck. bread, chips. I can only eat black pudding if I load it with ketchup. Don't need it, though. Just thinking like Red sauce, of brown it. sauce on a fry. Red sauce. And they give you mushrooms and tomatoes as well. That's the word. Do they give mushrooms. you beef sausages oh. instead of pork? They, they give you fucking stinking sausages. I don't know what the fuck. Like, <laughs> like in Northern Ireland as well, it's like when you go on holiday, you get a sausage. It's not yeah. like yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like a no. proper do you Danny f- or da- Cookstown or. Do you ever find now if you eat a, like a sausage in like a restaurant or like if you do go to England or something and the sausage is quite like uh, I noticed them whenever we were down in Dublin. The sausage in the hotel was really like small and thin. Uh-huh. It's like quite. I just I just think as soon as I see that, I'm like, that's gonna be a shit sausage. Yeah. I like That's it. That's what like, she said. <laughs> like a, you know, like it's you really like, a, you like, like a stick deli, sausage. Like, yeah. When you yeah. put your knife into it, it kind of goes like, you know, it spits like that, you know. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> but, um. Because you're making me, I don't know, come on to do like a food review. Yeah. <laughs> Just off guard. I think it's a perfect way to lead into it because obviously, like, as you, as you know, like we were talking there before we started, 
there's a lot i think you can get a lot off like the djk website yeah. etc but there isn't really anything unless i've completely missed it that really delves into like you like your background is there no mm, probably right. under the radar but then not. we found a wee article which kind of went through almost like told like you from like point a to point b maybe there's a few like wee bits in there that you're like i would change that okay but uh you started off i think one of the notable things was well i have down here how would you describe your journey up until where you and your business is now so like maybe going back to when you were younger like did you have were you always like entrepreneurial or like i will eat it starting way back um obviously went to a normal secondary school like didn't go to grammar school or anything like was a bit of a dale boy growing up to be honest like a bit of a like wheeler dealer were you that guy selling, selling sweets? sweets i was well I was, no it was worse than sweets to be honest was, <laughs> I'm not that. selling like uh um, copy dvds yeah. playstation games yeah. music cds and i was selling these to the teachers so I was doing that, selling fireworks. I like, probably shouldn't be saying all this, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, well. But uh, like all that type of stuff in the school. Bit of a dreamer. Left school with no GCSEs. Got like one C in five days. Uh, teachers say, like, you'll never amount to anything. You know, you don't play yourself, blah, blah, blah. But just always a daydreamer. Always like, looking for opportunities. Mm. Didn't really... I didn't, wouldn't say I don't believe in education, but didn't think that was a be-all and end-all. You know, like mm-hmm. leaving school. Um as I say, didn't leave, didn't leave much. Um, had jobs like working in like KFC, worked in Burger King. Was a security guard. Was a Chinese delivery driver. Was a DJ. Like going around the houses, like all these different jobs. Didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, and then my dad passed away in like two thousand and six. I was with him. Mm-hmm. He like had a heart attack and stuff. So it was like really really bad experience. You know, probably one of the things you would never want to experience. No, yeah, really really yeah. tough time. And it was like one of them moments where you could go down that path, like with the wrong crowd or, you know, let it go to your head and, you know, do whatever. Or you could sort of use it as a bit of momentum or a bit of, mm. like, fucking, you know, need to get up here and do something. Yeah. So it was left a few quid and I came up with a name of a business, which was for Cod and Ulster. Brilliant. So come up with a name before the concept before the menu before just had the name in my head and it was like fuck that name's too good to go to waste you know so you I mean? made the name then you decided exactly. i need to have it make work, a chippy work, like. back, work backwards <laughs> on it. yeah so sort of ran the name by like friends and family and stuff and they were like ah you're you're normally your stupid ideas all that um and then sort of try to apply myself so because it was on it was on probably benefits at the time um mm. went and done the princess trust course so they ran like a free course where you could go and like entrepreneurial people could go and sign up and they get you like a work placement and they teach you like the basics and you have like a mentor and stuff like that there was like a a fish and chip shop in east belfast where i lived and you were able to go in there and work for you know a few months but it wasn't paid it was just to get the experience yeah. so when i done that so i was doing that early in the mornings i was then looking around and went on the google maps and found like all the main like arterial routes in east belfast that had fish and chip shops mapped all them out and then found the main road that didn't have one which was Yelbert Bridge Road um, and so right, right I really want to sort of get it around this area uh, I spoke to the estate agent and all and sort of started doing negotiation and this is like first time for me you know never no experience or anything what age were you at this point? I would have been like 20 fuck so this would have been in 2000 uh, I would maybe 21 by 2006 Jesus. So twenty twenty one. And was it just the name? It like was the you, name. Like you didn't the name have an just, interest in actually. No, I didn't. I, I, no, no, no. Not, no interest in food. Were no you in, frequent in chippies? Like do you no, know, no. There's not in your family no, or any. No family chippies. Oh not God. an interest in chippies. That's but bad. it was just the name. I was like, the name's too good to waste. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> I don't really. I sort of fell into fish and chips by accident. Yeah. So I was working at uh, this chippy was called the Bridge Fish and Chip Shop. Guy owned it. Guy called Johnny. He was from High Ramsden's originally, if you remember High Ramsden's, so he was really, really experienced. Um, so he sort of took me on his wing, he was working for free. So I'm in pulling the spuds, doing this, doing this, thing they paid. Um, sort of learned the ropes. Knew, as I say, my dad passed away, got a few quid. New location I found. And then through the Princess Trust course, sort of trying to start setting up a business. Yeah. Had the name, sort of sat down, pen and paper, started working on a menu. The menu was obviously a theme to do with Northern Ireland. So yeah. it was like... Ian Paisley Burger, Jerry Adams Burger, <laughs> King Billy's Family Feast. How much oh was that? I, mm, I'm going to say 
Was it sixteen pound ninety? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pin the tail on the prod. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was all that theme, but at the same time, it was like both sides the yeah. menu. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, so done that. So because I had it's not a funny story. So because I had Ian Pace and Jerry Adams in the menu, I was like, I sort of need permission to use their names, yeah. right? So obviously I grew up loyalist Harry he spell fast, and I'm like, right, fuck, I'm gonna have to go to Sinn Fein and ask and like, <laughs> where do I even start. So local closest Sinn Fein office to me was Alex Maskey's in Lower Armour Road, mm-hmm. and this, as I say, this was way back in 2007, six, 2007. Yeah. So it was still like it's not where it is now. Yeah. yeah. Like fuck, I gave myself up. So I was like, right, and drove down, walked in. I go, boy goes, yeah, I can help you, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, can I speak to somebody about something? And he's like, yeah, yeah, come on in the back. And then I go in the back Come and he the back. Locks, locks the door and I'm starting to sweat a wee bit. <laughs> oh, and he goes, what is it? And I says, oh, I'm up with business and he's Belfast. Um, it's a fish and chip shop. And he just sort of looks at me as if, like, what's wrong? Yeah. You know, doesn't know what I'm going to say next. He goes, right, take a seat over there. So I take a seat and he's sort of getting sorted and that. Next to me, Alex Maskey pokes his head and goes, right. And I says, right, mate. Yeah. And then the guy goes, well, what is it? And I sort of explain. I said, listen, I'm in the fish and chip shop. Um, he's Belfast. And I'm using this name. He goes, what's the name? And I says, for Cotton Ulster. Well, that just broke the ice. You know, he just burst yeah. out laughing. And he goes, well, what can we help you with? And I says, well, why don't I use Jerry Adams' name on the menu? Burst out laughing again. <laughs> I say, fuck are you, some balls coming in here. And all this here. <laughs> so we start chatting. And he says, listen, leave it with me. Leave your mobile number. We'll speak to Jerry and come back to you. So I left it with him. So after that, when the DUP, it was easier enough for me in my head anyway. Yeah. Went in, done the whole thing again. And he says, yes, we'll get it to you and we'll come back to you. So for weeks, fucking nothing, nothing came back, neither of them, so I just plowed ahead anyway, put their names in the menu. Um, outside of the stores, the first store, we had Jerry Adams sprayed on one side, <laughs> Ian Paisley sprayed on the other, and it was like, I can't remember the captions, it was like, I can't remember, it might come to me, but it was really two funny captions, the two of them speaking to each other, yeah. and uh, to the day we had them, never touched, so you think like Jerry Adams being sprayed in yeah. a certain area, never graffiti, never touched nothing. So it was like really, people really bought into the whole thing, you know, the whole theme. Um, Opened up, uh, tourists from everywhere, won awards at like Parliament Buildings for most innovative enterprise, best marketing initiative, like, yeah, flew. Grew it, like probably had like double figures in staff in that one. Within a year to 18 months, started looking for a second location, found a second location, same name, grew it, then found a third location. So within three years of three stores, probably about 15 staff, I was 20, 21, um, young kid, first kid, um, met my wife, mm-hmm. who's now my wife. Yeah. So it was like a lot Yeah. the money, a lot going on, mm-hmm. like even things back in, like people phoning in sick and then I'm having to go in and split yourself in three yeah. and loads of problems. At the time, investing in property as well over in England. So it was like, just like, you think you're invincible that age and you're yeah. just sort of like yeah. running as the momentum's going and then the bubble burst literally um two stores started going bad so i was in one trying to prop it up and then you fix that one and then you're on the next one yeah. you know and you just when was it, so this would have been like opened opened in 2007 right and then probably started going bad like we had three stores in the space of three years yeah so between like around 2010 those sort of recession sort of ah, yeah and exactly yeah. like when that like when everything was going well like were you surprised in any way at how well it done or were you just sort of rolling with it like did you expect it to be honest it's one of them ones because you're in it you don't you just had like blinkers on I had blinkers are on yeah. and you're, you're just like you're just, just rolling you did you did you see like the money and stuff coming in and immediately thought was it more like looking back on it now but like being bl- sort of blunt would you think it was more like a do you think it was like a greed thing where like you almost seen the money coming in and you were like oh if i have another store i'll make double this and yeah another that's store. Yeah. yeah honestly that's probably one of the yeah. the key mistakes that you make because you do think you only think the upside so yeah. you think like two stores double the money but you don't see double the problems you see what you yeah. want to see yeah so yeah. is there something that like stands out specifically that you think was the reason for I think it's number one, spreading yourself too thin. Number yeah, two, yeah. Um, if you go into any chippy in the Surrey, any area, you know, you're only as good as your last fish supper. So, yeah, like, yeah. you go in today and you be Fran, yeah. and the food will be great. And you go in the next day and he's Fran, the food's shit. I definitely. Was that, something, <laughs> was that something that you did sort of face with ah, consistency yeah. and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard. It's a, it's a hard business. And even back then, chippies were still prominent. But yeah. now, if I said to you three, 
what's your go-to takeaway at the weekend? You, I put my money on, you're not going to say chippy. You're going to say oh, Chinese pizza, Chinese kebab, pizza. Indian. Pizza or kebab. Thai, there's a whole lot Chinese, Chinese, Chinese so is, a kebab. <laughs> so is chippy, chippy's not even on the list? No. I well, wouldn't, like, I wouldn't depends, be fond of chippy. I would need to be in the mood. Like, Ex- you know. I, but years ago, it yeah. would have been like, yeah, it. everybody got on a Friday or, yeah. you know, it was a regular weekend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. do you think like big franchises coming in and stuff as well has an effect on that? Like now you, there's like... McDonald's McDonald, everywhere. Tim Hortons. Hortons yeah, yeah. You've, you've, you've had many options. And I think it was Chippy was the whole traditional, like, you know, family. There was queues yeah. outside and all. It's just all, it's all the demographics change as, as things do change. And even yeah. like your mobile phone, like you'd be straight on to just eat delivery. You're not on there ordering did, Chippies. Did Jerry Adams ever get back? No. No, no did politicians ever. ever no, nobody. What? Surprised Ian Pizzi Jr. didn't phone you up. Like, uh, uh, I, I, yeah, my, if you send me to the Maldives, like, I could see this working. Uh, uh, say no more. Say well, no more. Well, 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 what was in the burger? The Ian Pizzi uh, So the only, di- the only difference between a Jerry Adams and an Ian Pizzi, so Jerry Adams was just like bacon and cheeseburger, yeah. and Ian Pizzi was bacon, cheese, and onion ring. Why, why is that? Is that a reason for that? Well, just like the Impulsive Bell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but even inside the stores, so you come in and it was like all, like even back in, like we had like, say a flat screen TV with like yeah. a DVD plan and the DVD yeah. was like on a loop with all the rats in Belfast. Uh, so I used to mm-hmm. come in, obviously a theme menu and we had like shelves. There was a guy in uh, Belfast City Centre he used to make like all models. Did you ever see like the chess boards? Yeah, yeah. So that boy, we used to work with him close, and he used to do us all sculptures. Yeah. So I had like the Queen, Mark McGuinness, Jerry Adams, the Pope, King Billy, like all basically everything you think of, like paramilitaries, policemen, yeah. like all around all the stores. It was like yeah. people come in. They used, we used to have like uh, takeaway menus um, printed on the counter, and people used to come in and take them. They like they end up people selling them on eBay, people shipping souvenirs. them to family in America, like yeah. souvenirs, right? Oh, well. And then like uh, tour buses used to stop, so like so doing tours of murals, and then sick. used to come. And yeah. then I used to have, remember I used to have to go out and like uh, put the shutter down all the time <laughs> because people used to want their photograph in front of the shutter. Yeah. So it's just wee silly memories that uh, yeah. you know what I mean. But going on to obviously, as I say, I had the three stores, like probably fifteen staff. Best and proper and all advice wrongly, everything else, but um what you were saying, it's like, you know, I sort of grew too big too quick, mm-hmm. didn't have the experience, bubble burst, it was recession, you know, people were maybe watching what they were spending, maybe there was problems in the stores, food wasn't as good, standards dropped, and then you're looking around going, Fuck all the bills still need, you know, the bills don't reduce. Yeah. So like the ring still stays the same, all the staff still need paid. And then when you start scrambling around going, How do you fix this? Well, you know, it gets to the point where you just have to hold your hands up and go, listen, it is what it is. Hindsight, I said to my missus, like, could have stayed with one store and been really strong, but then I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah. 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 And it, as what I said at the start, I didn't want to have a fish and chip shop business. Yeah. yeah. So it's like... Just one door closes, another door opens. Exactly. Thing. But at the same time, when I went bankrupt and all, I remember, like, sitting on the sofa, my missus and all, and you sort of feel like... Because at the time, maybe wearing nice clothes, driving a nice car, all this, and yeah. then, like... You fuck all. What was yeah. that like? Like going was, from that to just literally like nothing. you feel like like a disease. Like yeah. it sounds stupid, but when you become officially bankrupt, it's like you just like as if you feel your tattoo in your head. That's why I felt anyway. Because yeah. you don't at the time you don't see the bigger picture. You don't see like you can start again. You don't see like how am I going to build the building blocks back? Yeah. It's like you just feel like because you've loads of friends on the way up, mm-hmm. and then when you look around on the way down, it's like, well, you're not. Yeah. that guy anymore you know you're a failure blah 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 whatever so yeah. and was that like a hard decision to make to go bankrupt like did you like I'd assume it'd be tough like uh, because you, it's the unknown you know you're, mm. you're taking advice from like um, you know your accountant or solicitors or whatever way you know you're, you're finalising it all but mm. at the same time it's that like stigma yeah, yeah. you know it's me, me, maybe it's a bit different now maybe it's a bit more maybe because I'm older you sort of know the ins and outs and know the reasons why and it happens to people but i think when you're in it at the time it's like fuck you know yeah. you don't you, f- you feel like you know people's talking about you or yeah. like oh I, you know because then there's always people whether it's a Norris, northern irish thing or whatever there's always people want to see your downfall as well yeah. Yeah. so it's like there's yeah. no one going fuck all right yeah. Yeah. see Happy now days, yeah. uh, do you know what i mean yeah. so it's like but again you could sit here with 10 ideas you could say i always want to do a podcast I always want to do a podcast 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But until you try it, you don't know yeah. it's going yeah. to succeed or fail. Yeah. So yeah. at least you have the balls to go out and try it yeah. and give it a good run. And if you fail nine times, mm. keep failing. You'll fail big, fail often. And in the 10th one, I'll, I'll win. Like I could be doing what I'm doing today and I could fail. But through experience yeah. from the last 15 years, you know, you sort of yeah. learn. You're not yeah. going to win every time. Yeah. Yeah. But you need to keep. Yeah, you know, getting um, back up. What right. what was it like, sort of picking yourself up from that point in your life where you almost feel like you have it all to then having that sense of I have nothing here? Like, what, what was that like? Like, what was there a defining turning point where you went, I'm not gonna sit here and you know sulk over what's happened. I'm gonna go on, or was it more like a gradual sort of thing where you just almost like fell into what you're almost doing now in a way, or was it more like a something clicked one day you're like I need to get up and, and do this well I think I wouldn't be the type of guy that would sort of you know feel too sorry for myself or have that pity party or like look at me poor me all that mm -hmm. I think it's more so a reality check off you know I had this no I don't I'm on benefits but one thing that was like in my favour was I had time yeah do you yeah. know what I mean I wasn't working for anybody else so it was like sitting there going right how can I what, what, number one, what am I going to do next? Number two, how am I going to do it? You know, yeah. what's my options? Obviously, my wife and I was still, was still stuck by me. She didn't yeah. disappear. Yeah. Um, young kids, so there was like other pressures there. You had and, a child at this time too, didn't you? Did, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think with my son and then my daughter's 12 now, so I would have been, what's this? I, I, she would have been born as well I suppose yeah. it was sort so of a survival too. instinct thing, ah, thing that's too it, that's that sort of just kicked right. in but again that's what I think I said before we started it was like my mum was like putting electric in my electric meter like yeah. she was buying me shop and stuff yeah. so it was like it more so like the embar an embarrassment factor as well where you're sort yeah. of going like you're a man you know, you're yeah, at a certain yeah, age yeah, now yeah. you had this now you don't so it's like fuck I but yeah. seen the part now where it was like you shared a phone and your mum yeah. paid for the top ups and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, or you just could only afford one top yeah, up. Like, yeah, yeah. It's crazy to think that, like, even just something as simple as that, you take take for granted, like, I, like having yeah. your own phone and things. But, but see, it, but that's the I mean, it just rolls off the tongue now. But then in thinking back, it's like, you know, I think sometimes as well, you need, it, it's okay. Like, if you get to a certain age in life and everything goes great, you know, mm -hmm. and then you do have that big bump in the road, it'd be far harder to start again. But I think having all them bumps. Yeah, and sort of young in your career it's yeah. sort of you know you do have the time and you do have yeah. you know the, the chance to sort of rectify the mistakes yeah and would you say that's made you stronger now oh, second percent. time round million 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 percent. Mistakes? yeah because you might have to go the third time round and fourth yeah. time round so it's <laughs> yeah. like you know you can never take and don't take anything for granted now either yeah. you know a bit more sort of switched on persistence you know nothing's going to happen overnight you're not going to you know yeah. succeed and be aye yeah was moving them forward to obviously like you were selling stuff on is it ebay was the first e ebay word was, was was i suppose whenever you were at that time where you were making money from like doing the chippies and stuff you were probably buying yourself designer clothes yeah so it's funny how the whole thing kind of and that's what i said when yeah. i was reading that article it's so funny how the whole thing almost like you can see it forming yeah and like that to me was the weird thing about it. like even reading that and talking to you now it's like you know if you didn't have the chip you probably wouldn't have the clothes that you had which probably wouldn't have got yeah. you the interest in what you were doing now yeah so it described was that kind of like a thing where you were wait i need money so i'm gonna sell this coat Is yeah that it? yeah that's li that's literally it like as i say we were living like week to week um you look in your wardrobe and you're going fuck well you know, maybe a jacket there. Like it was cruise at the time in Victoria Square. I used to shop there. Yeah. Always into the brand Stone Island. Looked at my wardrobe, going, "Well, my V's couple of Stone Island coats. Like needs must. You know, I need to go on the eBay. So if retail, when I bought them, say they were five hundred, I'm going to put them on the eBay. Hope for the best. If I get fifty quid, whatever, and it sold for like two hundred and fifty quid. So I'm like analyzing it, going, "Fuck, I paid five hundred. I've had it for three, four years, and I've sold it for two fifty so I'm going like or something in this so literally yeah. just use the 250 to go back on the eBay and start buying or bidding on uh, pre-owned Stone Island jackets mm -hmm. one a few of those postman brought them like say three four days later opened them up checked them took better photos better descriptions better keywords relisted them back on 
and say I won won three eighty quid. Say I sold it for like one hundred and thirty. Yeah, so that's crazy too. Like, because I'd say a lot of people listening to this are taking that for granted, thinking the likes of Depop and stuff that are about now. But you're talking back how long? Ten years ago was it? Ah, uh, so this like, would have been. This would have been uh, resale even really wasn't a thing, was it? Of no, second hand. Not, not not really, because when I stumbled upon it, I was doing it for. I wasn't doing it for a business. Obviously, I was just selling yeah. the jacket just free up money. Yeah, but that money was freed up. I started looking because eBay was filled with pre-owned clothes, but people were just throwing the jacket on their bed and taking a shift photo. Yeah. yeah. So then I was I was just like looking at it, looking at it, and then went on one month for like decent money, and then made like fifty quid on it. I'm going fuck. It wasn't hard work at all. This free time, I was interested in the brand, I'm interested in clothing. So then the momentum started to uh, yeah. I had a wee bit of passion for it, and yeah. it was like. It was a simple thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but go, go ahead. We Did go you sit. have that, like... Because I'm thinking, if I was in your position, I know exactly what would happen with me, where if I had the business and then it failed and I was kind of at home and almost you you are sort of sitting there feeling sorry for yourself and then you start selling, like, the like the clothes and stuff. Like, I know in the back of my head, like, my mom or something or, like, my girlfriend would be like, why don't you just go get a job? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm in I assume there was yeah. that pressure yeah, on there yeah, where it wasn't yeah. just a case of, like, you were almost, like, hit and reset and starting no, at home thinking, no. I'm building this business, but you're probably getting it in the air from so many yeah. people. Like, why are you selling coats? Like, yeah. like, do something more productive with your time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, it, obviously, it's easy for me to tell the story and it sounds very transitional. Yeah going from one to the other but there was that like family members friends like oh like sit, people send you screenshots oh i've seen this job ad what do you think of this yeah, yeah. you know do you not think you should go work in this factory do you not think you should do this but again just growing up going to school that, that wasn't me at all mm-hmm. you know had the wee jobs like as we all do and different takeaways and fast food and all that carry on but mm-hmm. i think I, I don't know why we just struck upon something where i seen like a bit of glimmer of hope with an opportunity you know I started looking at it going like why why does that you know if you're wearing that jacket there and you're going to, like if you got half your money back after a certain period of time you're starting going mm, it's a bit strange okay. yeah. you know what I mean there's something that yeah. so the more it wasn't like jumping out of one pan and then jumping straight in uh, you know, yeah. sort of taking taking it slowly testing it with one testing it with two yeah going fuck that actually worked and then showing my missus and going oh that actually worked there and then it's like oh maybe try it again you know and then sort of postman sort of bringing you them and then you sort of see a wee bit of success mm-hmm. and you're not squandering the money you know you're, you're just getting by for the essentials like honestly you just like living day to day like i think our, the highlight of our week was like getting the chinese like yeah. when we could you know and yeah. it sounds so like you know on, on, on yeah. you know not reality but that was the reality at the time yeah and it's good it's good to have those experiences to sort of hit rock bottom and then know yeah what you what you have, what you lost, and then what you can sort of build back up to again. It makes you appreciate that, right? Oh, a million percent, yeah. Uh, and, like, how did that progress then from, like, you started selling, like, three selling stuff on eBay? Like, how did you grow that into, like, go- going into the DJ, DJK brand and stuff? Like, how did it progress from there? Well, I think that would have been, so we're, we're talking now, like, 2010, 2011, 2012. So let's say 2011, 2012. Obviously, Postman then sort of went from one jacket, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You know, he's bringing the parcels to the house. By the time my wardrobe's filled now, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm flipping yeah. the jackets. I'm focusing on the one brand, just Stone Island. Then, you know, you start taking up the missus' side of the wardrobe. Yeah. So then she's going, right, what's going on here? <laughs> but then you're proving to yourself, you know what yeah. I mean? It's working, it's working, it's working. Keep reinvesting. Then the bedroom sort of starts getting taken over. And this is just me, like, with my mobile phone, taking photos. Like, it's that, like, labour-intensive. You're, you're then going to... So what happened was, funny story is, like, the postman comes with your red van, drops the packages off. If you're not in, he leaves you while you were out card. Yes. Um, at this point, I wasn't driving. Mm-hmm. my daughter was born my daughter had a pram so I had to lift the pram walk from my house in East Belfast to Prince Regent Road there's a Royal Mail Depot mm-hmm. with an empty pram <laughs> because the, there was not many parcels that he gave me in a grey mail sack so I'm walking with an empty pram with no car uh, to the depot gives me the grey mail sack I put the grey mail sack in the pram and at this, I'm feeling embarrassed obviously because I'm walking like, like I'm going like what the fuck am I doing but I knew inside like that's my money in there, so yeah. I'm going to. It's my job, yeah. you know. I don't care what people. I'm walking down the road and people's in their cars, like looking, going, "What's he doing?" Going the pissing rain to Prince Regent Road, picking up the packages, bringing them home, then opening them all up, doing all the photos again. Then, 
I think at that point I didn't have a printer, so I'm going to the library at Hollywood Arches because there's a printer there yeah. and you pay 5p a sheet. So I'm walking to there, paying the 5p's, printing out the labels, putting them on the grey mail bags and then shipping them in the post office. So all them new manual tasks now yeah. you would take for granted, like yeah. with loads of printers and yeah. loads of things and all now, but it's like all them new things are like saving up to get my printer. Then obviously down the line got a small car, you know, it's like yeah. all them wee stepping stones of, you know, building that journey until when you asked her obviously I grew the bedroom I grew you know the point where I'm going to have to look for a unit you know yeah. what I mean like a wee small which is literally the size of this room to be honest uh, paint the walls a couple of clothing rails and then it's just literally the sacks turned into like a van yeah. so the wee red van was coming and it was just all filled with our stuff Yeah. and then the, the van load coming in the van load going out one thing that sort of stands out for me is like people who work for someone like are employed by someone they're always like oh this like hating on their boss being like oh he gets to sit up there and we all work but like would you say like there's a reason for that like it, is it worth going through all that heartache to yeah. get to where but that's, that's, that's get to that point? why sometimes it's good to do things like this because maybe people who follow us on our instagram or tiktok or whatever only see the here and the now yeah. so they see like you know, you're working with certain people, like stalking certain brands, like only see the rise. They don't see all the tough times behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And like we very rarely talk about them. So it's like, you need to go through all that, the sort of all the shit and keep banging on the door mm -hmm. to try and get the momentum to keep growing. Because people just think you click your fingers. Like nowadays people's like, I'm gonna be a Bitcoin this, or yeah. I'm gonna be a Forex <laughs> trader, I'm gonna yeah. do this earn a grand a week by doing this you know they always want to take the easy option yeah, I sit at your desk and uh, you know, do that yeah the, sign up to this yeah. and fucking sell this you know it's like it's, yeah. it's reality is yeah. it, you know life's hard it's yeah. like literally and even, even when you are climbing you still get knocked out like you were saying like you you got robbed like the store got robbed yeah Um, what was that like like in terms of going in and all your stuff's gone like in terms uh, of what you've built is it did it almost feel like i'm back at square one again here hi uh, well it was nearly lights out now that's that's skipping a wee bit so we moved from the house i'll just show yeah. you move from the house moved to a small unit obviously filled that unit uh -huh. then moved we weren't never open to the public so mm -hmm. before we got robbed we never opened to the public but what happened was we were selling so this up. unit sorry to interrupt no, this unit just for like Posts and stuff out. Like uh, it was like, literally it just for like space. Shop, it wasn't a know, shop. Right? wasn't wasn't public facing. It was literally yeah. just for space for me to like have the room, the process of stuff, to pick pick it and ship it, and then the, the guy they're on mail to bring more in. So at this stage, obviously, with mainly Stone Island, then we started adding CP company, then we started adding like Prada, Hugo Boss, and started expanding. I was gaining knowledge. You know, I'm learning about the brands, sort of becoming a bit of an expert, um, checking for fakes, like all that carry on. Um, then we agree there, moved the premises we're in now, took the second floor, um, still weren't open to the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened was at that time, you're probably talking like 2013 maybe. Social media, like Instagram and stuff, wasn't what it is now, obviously. Yeah. But we sort of had a bit of a presence on Instagram, a bit of presence on Facebook, and people started messaging, asking, can we come and try it on? Can we do this? Can we do that? And I was like, no, we're not open to the public, you know, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. the demand got that great. And I'm going yeah. like, am I doing myself disservice? Because yeah. money's money, you know, sales are sales. So I started meeting people. Like my first, a, a friend of mine, who's a really good friend now, actually met him in a fucking petrol station. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To like, give him a, a jacket. <laughs> Seriously? Do you know what I mean? So I was meeting people in McDonald's car parks, petrol stations, like four courts, like That's mad, all like. public areas to yeah. like give them items. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like one to one, face to face. Like clothing drug dealer. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like eight o'clock at night. <laughs> <just> like <laughs> McDonald's. Behind yeah. the scenes. <laughs> Kai, Kai yeah. no car yeah, payments. Yeah, the police are watching across the, what the heck? Uh, oh, he uh, slipped him cash. Uh, what's yeah. happening here? Yeah. Would, you ever, <laughs> would you ever got like people were a bit skeptical of if it was like the bronze thing? Because obviously you have like replicas and stuff. Like people were like, you know, because it was so like all meaty and McDonald's and all was really anyone ever like, is this real like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 all the, but even still to this day you know we've we've obviously nicely fitted out store and all now but because mm. the store is on you know our East belfast they're like they sell gucci in there they sell balenciaga mm. in there like, that doesn't add up yeah, yeah. it's like us opening a jeweler's on you know, road or shankle yeah. road or falls road and selling relaxes it's going they're not real you know it's like yeah. it's not associated it's not yeah. the, the norm so we, no we still get that this day um but no, meeting people, all car parks, all that carry on. And then, as I say, demand grew, people wanted in. So what I'd done at the time was put a wee small beer fridge in and put a TV on the wall. 
mm-hmm. and it's like it makes it a bit more sociable yeah. mm-hmm. saying guys come on this is class get a bottle of beer and you know music's on the background and this is what we have and at this point i probably skipped a wee bit out but at this point we were doing the pre-owned obviously yeah. the vans were coming in and out mm-hmm. but i started looking because i thought the next stage from pre-owned was to sell brand new mm-hmm. um so it was very very difficult market to get into you don't see like new designer clothes stores opening anywhere it's like very few and far between um so on the ebay.it ebay was my go-to all the time so ebay italy and seen a guy was selling brand new cp company new with tags sent him a massive thesis i'm based in prado in italy so i says to stephanie my missus i says i'm gonna go to italy right. and she's like what do you mean <laughs> and i'm like i'm gonna go meet this guy in italy yeah. just random she's like are you serious and i was like yeah 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 it's just like you know where you have that gut uh, feeling and i'm like yeah, yeah i'll go meet her going to italy like sell someone a coat in a car park i, I don't <laughs> know <laughs> i think she just thought like it's an expensive coat just let just let him like just turn on you know uh, yeah. and, uh, just but um went and met the guy and literally took me to work put me off from the airport took me to a warehouse and it was just like kind of christmas just like you know, like if what you've been doing because i was probably doing pre-owned for like 18 months to two years yeah, yeah. and yeah. then this guy sort of fate and i'm like fuck i've actually came to the warehouse now we're like brand new this is the dream how were you keeping up with it i'm on like was it all ebay like was it it was all was all, it that, all that? ebay with touch of like socials so yeah. like a few facebook people matching a few groups we were in like we were posting like there's like there's like secret facebook groups and like obviously no way you have like shankle band sale and stuff yeah, yeah. but there's like branded like Clo- closed groups yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean so guys in there going oh, I'll take a medium and that I'll take this and then just ask an address send the money via PayPal and we were shipping so you had like a few different parts you had your eBay you had your socials and then you guys meet in car parks so it's like <laughs> you, you them all going but my in my head I'm going like pre-owned at the time you think 2012 2013 pre-owned compared to what it is now yeah. it's like not people say it's dirty but it, back in it wasn't like it fashionable it wasn't ah, it wouldn't of, have been like someone else's clothes you know? exactly yeah. whereas now it's probably the ethical thing yeah. to do it's like fashionable yeah. it's like you know people are all in it so i thought natural progression was trying to get the brand new found the guy in italy went there get a say kid in the sweet shop and i was like fuck i've hit like it's so hard to get a supplier like he could be my guy so he sold like past season cp company stone island yeah. started doing business with him getting the, the brand new in so pre-owned the brand new and then i was like starting to tip the scales going brand new brand new brand new you know pre-owned started down down because I, th- yeah. I just thought that no progression um start opening the store to the public a wee bit more inviting more people in more people knew the stock was there and then bang. what you said bang yeah rob lights lights out basically and like what they didn't come in and take like three jackets like how much no no take? like 90 percent, 95 percent of everything Averine, okay. give it give us an idea of how much you had in the shop at that point i like, would have been like cost price to me like 15 grand i think at the time fuck. so for me then building from zero yeah back to the earth like a stockpile of that was like big you know that was like your life again yeah. and that's not that's, what you're doing too that's i think that's, that. that would be the worst part of that whole thing was like that's not like someone has physically came ah, in there and yeah. like you, it's not like you can it's not a bad say, business decision I yeah. could have done this and yeah. made this differently do you know what I mean was there yeah. a party that was like though I didn't want to start inviting people into the shop like, or was it sort of well you sure, again you, you think that in hindsight but then yeah. when we started inviting people you know you were selling stuff as well Yeah. and I think you always had that because of the experience with chippies and being uh, facing the public you always knew if you can get the product into somebody's hand that's that's an easy sell too yeah. do you know yeah. what i mean so you were doing that the guys came in through the skylight we we uh there was another floor oh, uh, there was a flat roof at the back they came up over these buildings flat roof through us took the whole window and the frame out came through the skylight shone the torch and all the bits to lift um had sacks and all with them filled all these big massive sacks out on the flat roof again dropped them in the entry anyway i thought you said you had sacks with them <laughs> what did you, what did you <laughs> i thought you said, said you had sacks with them <laughs> He said they had sex. <laughs> like, so they broke it. Had sex when you were saying like, that's just dirty. <laughs> that's what I thought. It's like a dirty boss. Well. <laughs> that's like you earlier. Where is your mind? It's <laughs> very dirty. <laughs> That's like you hear me earlier. I'm also about my dog. It doesn't work the way it does. But when you said I kind of went, did I hear that right? <laughs> Is this going to be like one of the clips? <laughs> 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 going viral. <laughs> but like, 
and in terms of it, like, did, did you have security cameras in the place to know like that what happened? Or yeah, was I, it's, a, it's a funny thing is we had CCTV, yeah, but we didn't have insurance, right? Uh, oh. So we we're able to watch back the robbery. Right. Did you ever catch them? No, the police got them in the end. Right. Did they? I actually did. Did you yeah. get the stuff back? No, no. not one thing. No, Fuck's okay. sake. Uh, and like, don't want to ask. Did you? Did you know them? No, I actually didn't. No, you didn't. No. Were no, they ever in the store? No. No. That's wild. Like. I know. So it's always going around your head. Like, yeah. was it somebody that sort of knew off you? Like coming and kissing the place yeah. and then telling them. But you know, there was at that point. You know, you were sort of busy and there was people yeah. in and out. And yeah. You, you, yeah. You're going to be a target. You know. They, obviously we're insured now but the a designer clothing business is in the same bracket as like a jewelers in a bank that's yeah. the type because it's an attractive thing to steal yeah like even our store at the minute now like we have the fucking christ bollards out the front and the big massive steel poles yeah so you can't drive a car through yeah you know? so you need to go to the m accesses now to yeah stop that touch wood yeah <laughs> helicopter <laughs> <laughs> mission impossible I know, I know. Fuck's sake. that's mad though like that that will be gotten but how did you sort of pick up from there was it just kind of like right you know <laughs> shit happens let's move on I right, well again it's one of them like you, you, you have these like key milestones in life and it was again that was one of them ones again pity your stomach like fuck me I have got this point again like you mm-hmm. think you've that momentum gaining and then bang bubbles yeah. burst yeah. so you're sitting there with the police and they're doing all the investigations and you know it's going to take forever and maybe nothing mm-hmm. will come off it yeah. um, you know you're not insured yeah. Yeah. so first thing left the phone to the Italian boy explain the situation by a stage we were doing okay orders like at the time um seeing we were hungry seeing we were wanting to grow and luckily enough we used to do pro forma where you paid up front yeah. explain what happened and then he gave us like an order 30 days credit so he shipped the goods to help us get back on our feet yeah so only for that we wouldn't have had a business yeah so he shipped the goods in turn with that with the robbery was the amount of publicity so if you went mm. on the Google, it was like on UTV, BBC, radio stations, newspapers. Yeah. Like, and then when the first drop arrived from Italy, people were coming from all over the country because yeah. they were going like, on you, well, I was seeing you on UTV. We didn't even know there was a designer store here. Yeah. We thought there was only crews. We thought there was only us. Yeah. So it started putting our name out there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, through the socials, like, and people started to come. So like yeah. on the flip side, probably in the weeks and months after that, business yeah like went away yeah. way up because brand awareness was like I through the roof one door closes and another door opens yeah thing again. don't get me wrong i wouldn't like to go through it again yeah. but <laughs> yeah it was like that was the positive that came out of it yeah. if there was one yeah. yeah and now you're still in the same unit as what you were yeah so what happened so we grew grew that unit so i the, that store that got robbed was originally there was like a single door entrance it was like downstairs there you come up the stairs and straight up onto the like our shop like our public yeah. store was on the second floor and then we had the third floor it was like storage um grew, grew out around that for a few years it was strong you know retail business was good grew the website um we were sort of known for like black friday sales so don't know when you were doing any digging like people used to camp out in tents yeah like fucking queue up down the road like lose their mind like Mad. website crash like the whole hype like was was mental honestly like through the roof like numbers wise like you know visitors like everything i mad um so grew that over the last load of years and then before covid we took there was a woman's hairdressers on the ground floor they moved out so we took that as well so we moved the whole store to the ground floor retail unit and then took the second floor as warehouse and then the third floor as offices. Yeah. So just rejigged the whole building. And what was that like then whenever COVID hit? It was sort of one of them times where I remember we'd done a video. So we, I wasn't a big fan of COVID. Yeah. And not, not anybody was, but I didn't really believe it uh, as such. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting into that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I think the turning point for me, McDonald's, yeah. in East Belfast near Conswater they put out a statement saying we're closing yeah. so as soon as they put out a statement I was like fuck I'm going to have to close yeah. you know because McDonald's is closed McDonald's doesn't close for anybody and everywhere else was closed and obviously a few staff there and are like looking at me going I'm closing and we're not closing what's happening because we can still trade online Yeah. but yeah. then on the online side I started seeing like statements being put out so it was like River Island online like H&M like all like other clothing retailers going like we're shutting down operations so I was like fuck maybe it is worse than what I think blah 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 so I says right 
we'll close. So closed. We've done like a big sale event. Just to offload stock. Here's me. No point stock sitting here dead for like yeah. a month, yeah, yeah, yeah. six months. You just don't know. Offload a load of stock. Get rid of it all. And then we're closed. So we're all on Zoom together. Like speaking. What I used probably did as well at the time. Yeah. And we were doing like website maintenance. Like doing wee jobs. Whenever we get round to. I was climbing the walls after two weeks. Yeah. And I was looking at a few competitors that were still open. They're yeah. still trained online. Yeah. So I says to them, right, I need to go back to work. I can't sit in the house yeah. here. I'm fucking doing my head in. Yeah. Um, we went back to work, kept the shutter down the public and just traded online. Yeah. Just that seen us through, you know. I think in terms of like the general public had like furlough money, everybody was sitting on a mobile phone, like people was buying stuff left, right and centre. Yeah. And I'm going, why are you buying this? Because you've nowhere to go. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's what one thing I was going to ask. Did you uh, find that it sort of dropped because people didn't really need? No, it actually there? got better. Like I was going, uh, you like think, you think, like traveling to work. Like even now, like if I was traveling to work five days a week, that would be fifty, sixty pound of fuel a week. Whereas mm-hmm. you're saving that now. Yeah, everyone's disposable so income went up. That's the only thing you could do though to spend money yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. traveling. Yeah. 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 And I think the whole furlough thing, you would thought you were winning because you may be getting eighty percent, you weren't doing work. Aye. You yeah. know, people were getting grants, like it was all like and then we obviously done like we mini sale events and done different uh, you know, bits and pieces, special offers to try and get people to buy stuff. So yeah. you were constantly yeah. trying to change with the you know, navigate because yeah. obviously you're watching the news and it's going like, Oh, it's two weeks <laughs> and then it's another two weeks yeah, and then it's six yeah. months and then you fuck we don't know what's gonna happen here. Mm. And how does it feel now that you know like where you are is and and where your business is at is like the one of the go-to stores for any of that sort of designer gear like how does that feel now looking back at you know david when he was running to the post office and with a pram full of stone island stuff like if you ever took actual time to look back at that and go holy moly like i have three i have three floors here worth of staff and all that there like uh so so it's yeah. like you don't you don't because again the blinkers are on you're yeah. like in in yeah, the in usual. the job why yeah. and like obviously after covid i was we took the ground floor like refurbed out when covid was happening luckily enough the builders were able to still come in and do their job so like nice to the art store like we've targeted brands we wanted to get so it's like high-end italian brands we've captured all them so it's like what's next yeah so mm-hmm. then when you're leading on to like your own brand yeah that was like the next piece of the puzzle yeah. so obviously we have a warehouse for it yeah. so it's like constant aggressive like trying to yeah. trying to grow yeah. and trying to see what the next step is like calculate the risk yeah but at the same time you know there's always problems like you know it was covid and then it was a war in russia yeah like a fact that our own brand because deliveries are all fucked up because yeah. no flies were you here affected by the suez canal incident exactly yeah yeah, yeah. like all the, yeah so all, all these things are like yeah. you know and then even the price of shipping through the roof yeah. and like yeah. so yeah. our initial cost price and calculations was x and then now they're not and it's like you know it's all over the place and then like obviously we're launching this jacket this friday mm-hmm. but who the fuck launches a winter coat coming in the spring yeah. the only reason we're launching it now is because it's late yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's like all these different factors yeah. that you don't think, you know, come into the equation. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's 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 really great to be associated with all the designer brands and stuff. Obviously, we do a junior range as well, so you get the kids in maybe age six, eight, ten, twelve, yeah. and then they're on the ladder, and it's like, you know, they want to aspire to see footballers wearing it, see rappers wearing it, see yeah. celebrities wearing it, starting them young. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now it's because that was one of the things I think that appealed to us in terms of getting you on was that sort of you're now launched you've launched your DJK brand it's just like Belfast based yeah like how, how where did that come about is it just like right we're doing so well now it's co- I think it's one of them ones when you have the goal to capture so the, the designer clothing business is very difficult it's difficult to get brands so in Northern Ireland our biggest competitor is Flannels mm. Mm-hmm. there is nobody else really that's stocking the brands we stock so for us to get them is one thing to keep them to keep capturing them to get the budget you know it's very political how to get the stock and yeah. who's supposed to sell it and who's not supposed to sell it and all this so doing that and then succeeding in taking the boxes and doing it it's like what's next because you always want that challenge to try and keep getting it and the other thing is like for example if you had a sweet shop and you're selling Mars bars and tins of coke you know after a few years you're going to get bored mm-hmm. so I'm not saying I'm bored but we, when you go, oh, well, look, I've done that. 
attack that box and I got that brand. So next year we'll have got it again, but like, well, where's the excitement? Like, yeah. where's the challenge? So like, you're being dictated to you by the brands. So if that t-shirt you're wearing comes into me, I mightn't really like it, yeah. you know, but I'm having the bat with I the hope that the customer yeah. likes it. Whereas I can go on if I was in charge of that yeah. and I can influence the design, the size and fit, the material, yeah. the swing tags, the packaging, the quantity, you know, I'm being dictated to you by brands. So why not? Yeah. Why can't I be the brand? Yeah. So I can fuck. And then sat and thought about it and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, it's obviously big investment, you know, like, but I'm going like, there is no fashion brands coming out of Northern Ireland, coming out of Belfast. Yeah. And from my knowledge, come back, there hasn't been like a one that's made big in the scene. Because when we yeah. look at brands, you're looking at England, you're looking at London, you're looking at Milan, you're looking, you know, all different influences over there. Yeah. And the brands I'm buying. So like, well, why can't we be the big fish? Why can't we create something here? Because yeah. I think Northern Ireland as a whole, whether it's sports people, whether it's, you know, we always punch above our weight. So why not be proud of something that we can build? Yeah. And I think that's where that's the sort cool. of passion for it came from. Yeah, it's um, cool. It's cool to like realize that because there, apart from that, there is no real like we obviously have other brands like you know we've had David and stuff from outside in and stuff on, but like there's no real like the proper like are you marketing like high end designer like that's what yeah yeah. And was that a hard decision to make? Do you feel like a lot of people that's almost is like a Northern Ireland thing where you're kind of more or less selling yourself short in a lot of things yeah I think um, like you always have self-doubt as well yeah so like I didn't go to fashion school I'm not a fashion designer I'm not like you know the, my experience is like hands on with yeah. the world's best brands and there's yeah. no denying that so if you were a car dealer and I says do you, do you know anything about under the bonnet and the engine yeah. and the fucking mechanics you might go no but I know about how to buy and sell cars yeah so mm -hmm. if you're selling Fords and you know, Reynolds and all, not yeah. normal in brands, but if somebody says to you, you can sell Ferraris and Lamborghinis, you know, that's yeah. the aspiration. So when we've done that and we've had the experience of doing that, and if you can take all that brand knowledge and what you know about the materials, you know, the prints, the embroidery, the swing tags, and you can go, fuck, I could do that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a firm believer in going, why not? Yeah. yeah. You know, give it a go, like, yeah, but bring to the table all your knowledge. Right. And, and we've built a social following, We've built app downloads, we've built an email list, we've built loyalty, we've built repeat business, all the data, you know, so yeah. we're doing something right. So if you can bring all them ingredients to the table and then go now, right, this is what I think our consumer looks like. This is what I think they want, like a lifestyle brand. Now, we haven't priced our stuff the top, top end. Like yeah. we'd sell a Balenciaga t-shirt for £450 for a t-shirt in our store yeah, yeah. but our t-shirts are like 60 quid. Yeah. So in comparison there, it's like, don't get me wrong, £60 is still there for a t-shirt compared to you know river island or pre-mark, pre-mark or whatever yeah. Yeah. so but it's on a par where it's a lifestyle brand yeah. but it's affordable lifestyle yeah. and again with us obviously we've you know now different finance options like Klarna, clear pay all that yeah so i think bringing all that brand knowledge and going how how do we build this and i think on the on the downside and on the maybe naive side again through making mistakes and learning and failing is like we thought so if we have 100k on instagram it's like oh yeah we'll create this brand and everybody will just buy in this straight away yeah. you know it's not it's not as simple as that yeah. and that's what we're learning because it's just two different types of customer and we're trying we're brand building at the minute yeah you know, you're building building uh people will come and look and you'll you'll look on the socials and you'll look oh, I don't, but I, do you know anybody that's bought it can i see anybody wearing it yeah. You don't want to be the first to dip your toe in. So yeah. once you start to get momentum going and sort of get it in people's hands, then they can see the quality. Mm -hmm. So it's just that one of like, it's going to take time. Yeah. Whereas at the start, I thought like flick a switch, be have it. a warehouse full of stock, yeah. do the designs, sit, you know, but reality is we're, and this is the exciting part as well, because you're getting to meet all like different people in different industries that's yeah. interested and in now starting to wear the brand It's coming out on socials and people's buying into it. And, real people in the streets like there's no better buzz for me to walk down the street or be at a football match and see the cap or get some photos from a stadium yeah. or yeah yeah, yeah especially as i say we're a big champion for belfast northern ireland and we see brands coming out of manchester london etc that are close to home but we're always looking to the mainland uk yeah, not. whereas now we want them to look at us yeah as a country because we can be a force and people like I'd have connections over there, like through different designer clothing stores, 
clothing manufacturers that always think I've never been to Belfast oh why I was fucking rough over there and then it's Aye. like can I wear my watch over there I'm going to get mugged like are they still shooting people <laughs> over there it's like you know yeah. I'm like no yeah you know so we can be the cool brand popping up yeah and people can start going fuck they're actually making a bit of a bit of a scene here yeah. start taking us serious yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. And what sort of stuff is it now you have if people or anybody listening? Like, what sort of, sort of stuff have they went on your website? Like, hat, I know you're wearing hats and t shirts and stuff, but you said you've got that coat dropping as well. Yeah, so if it's uh, coat dropping on Friday, yeah. started with hats, beanie hats, socks, t shirts, the jacket, working on hoodies, tracksuits, so like there's uh, combat pants. So there's a lot of stuff that's ready and it's either currently being shipped. Mm-hmm. but it's like the logistics now is like so far removed from what it was so if we mm. were able to pick a lead time in 14 21 days it could be now six to eight weeks yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what i mean so everything's backed up so yeah. in terms of us even like if we wanted to launch like s- swim shorts yeah. for summer like we might you know by the time it's all completed and ready it's like I can get them for four, four months, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, you, you maybe still, miss. Uh, you're still almost in that learning process. <laughs> exactly, like exactly. Because we, because again, you're in, the, you're in the clothing business, but I'm buying finished products and just being shipped them and selling them. There's no like go. that other, whereas now you're taking on the full process of, like literally we set, the, so in our warehouse, we have two floors with the ground floor, which is literally a warehouse, all racks, packing and packing. Then with the top floor is design studio. So it's all open plan. Like we literally sit there with pen and paper. Yeah, it looks mm. sick. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. uh, so like we literally sit there, sketch out like the combat pants, look at other brands, what we like, what we don't like, inspiration, get samples, sent materials, size and fits, try them on ourselves, take photos, get other people in to try them on. Like literally measure them with a fucking tape measure, it's all done by hand, you know, like literally like yeah. it's from the ground up. Whereas people think you just buy like I buy this and then scrim print on it, like we're bad like rolls of cotton so the cotton comes like a roll of carpet goes to the factory and then they yeah. get like uh, tracing paper cut it out and then it's all stitched together so it's like a fully custom so you're even making the shape of the t-shirt yeah, making the shape of like everything yeah yeah no 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 because no. there's different grades of cotton so the cotton comes and like big ma- as I say like big rolls of carpet yeah. and then it goes on like a big massive massive table and then they stencil out like the shape and then cut it out with a big machine and then the body would be sewn together and then the arms are sewn on. Yeah. So it's like, I didn't even know this until yeah. I started doing it. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And is there like, you were sort of saying about inspiration and all, like, is there any brands out there at the minute that you look at and you write, like, what brands would you look at at the minute? Do you really like their stuff or like? There's there's brands, like when you're talking about the whole Northern Ireland and Belfast thing, there's brands in England, like there's brands called like Represent. Yeah. There's yeah. brands like Cole Buxton. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think they represent hoodie on yeah. uh-huh. I think they're soft claws like. yeah so yeah. when we sort of like obviously I've known them for a few years like to be honest when I was sort of selling pre-owned and then moved to the brand new they I seen represent jeans pop up in the market yeah. and obviously they started like small um, but we were looking at them and they're like heritage from you know where they're from Yeah. and we were looking at them for inspiration so when we first started we were like Oh, we can take bits of this brand and bits of that brand and try and have a bit of inspiration and influence. Sort of, yeah. But then, because we're building and we're trying to like create our own story and trying to create like our own vision, it's like, but we've all this on our doorstep. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's easy to look at somebody else and go, we can try and take a bit of this and a bit of that and try and recreate it. Yes, but it's not us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't, so, you so, don't want to be someone else. Type no. Anymore. So if you look at our latest socials and we're saying about that jacket trapping, like, did you see the latest videos with all the guys in the balaclavas and all? No. no. <laughs> so I think the last thing I seen was, you, it was beside, like, was I think it was at Milan or something, you was, or, or not Milan, like it was a pile of black like, supercars or something. Ah. Uh, yeah, where, was it, that maybe it was a few days ago? Aye, like. uh, that was, I'll just, I'll bring it up, you'll probably laugh at this here. I don't know if you can sort of. What happens in the video? So we went went to Shank. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> so you <laughs> love risking it all. <laughs> no, so, yeah. no, but this this is how real it gets because, as I say, represent like yeah. great brand, yeah. but they're in their bubble, in their town, yeah. in their city. You know, like flying the flag for there. So I'm sitting here going like, why why are we trying to like, you know, be something we're not? Yeah. And in terms of like being real, being current, being like, you know, relevant to people. Mm-hmm. So, we says, right, we'll give us a go. So, we went to Shankle Road, 
went to Falls Road, mm-hmm. went to a new lodge, and like done like photo shoots and videos. Like it was like top boy inspired. It was just like real, like on the streets. You know what I mean? Vegan sort of. I feel like I have seen it, but I'm just not. I don't want to say yeah in case it's not. I'm yeah. not fat <laughs> You sort of get the gist. Like you couldn't, you couldn't script this. No, you couldn't script it. No, I swear to God. These are jackets then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So niche. That's, mad. That's, That's what I mean. Cool. But it's like, you can't, you can't, like, as I say, you can take inspiration. Yeah. But see, trying to be, like, not trying to be somebody else, but trying to, like, focus too much on somebody else's grass when your grass is nice and green here. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're going, like, looking around. Like, we're not, like, a, we're not talking about the carnival of shipyard and, like, being, like, touristy and all that. We're talking about, like, look at the streets and what's happening and where we are. Yeah. And, like, there's loads of historic things here and loads yeah. of like yes the troubles happened we're not yeah. celebrating the troubles but we're like looking at just different aspects you're not, you're not, you're not ignoring yeah. it though it yeah. happened yeah. so it's like somebody commented on one of the videos the other day going oh we didn't see when Stephen Nolan sees us because we were on the way with balaclavas and guns <laughs> you know what I mean and I'm going well <laughs> if he does Jesus. like we've an answer for that because it's like tourists come here to see the murals with the guys with balaclavas and guns yeah. we're yeah. not saying we're that brand but we're, yeah. we're our heritage we're from Northern Ireland we're from Belfast so you can't just erase the past yeah. and like we went to the Falls Road and we went to the Shankill Road so we're not like trying to pigeonhole ourselves in the one side or the other yeah. it's like our demographic of the guy whether it's from 16 year old to 35 year old they're banning the equality product and it has to have that heritage behind it yeah. you know yeah. and that's what we're trying to build and I think like if you've seen a, a brand so there's another brand uh, uh, Cortez over in England it's like really a hype brand sells out there quick obviously we've told talk about cool box and represent and there's yeah. other brands like rappers and stuff who wear yeah. like are wearing balaclavas over there and everybody thinks it's cool yeah but it's the guys over here it's been wearing balaclavas for 30 yeah. years so if we're like yeah. put, putting yeah. that we taste as different things in I over there balaclava means like flipping cool gangster you road know road exactly. road <laughs> man like that yeah. is proper like you exactly know, yeah. yeah whereas over here it's like there's meaning behind it like Stephen yeah. Noel is on like do you think that's appropriate uh, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. but uh, that's what I mean that's what our answer is so it's like we want other uh, most of our business is outside Northern Ireland yeah, 90% of our business is outside Northern Ireland yeah. so we want the guys in England and Europe to go fuck that's cool what they're doing and the yeah. feedback we got is like through the roof yeah. like yeah. literally through the roof yeah. because you're doing something different yeah. you, know, you can't yeah. just be in with any other clothing brand and just go we have a t-shirt coming by it's great yeah. you know it's like tell a story show like objective show what you're trying to trying yeah. to build and it's like you're selling like an aspirational lifestyle but at the same time being relatable we're not yeah. trying to be snobby we're not trying to be anybody we're not you know it's trying to like sell to that guy that goes to the football has a bit of wit about him that knows where he comes yeah. from you know and you were saying like celebrity like you've had a few like Carl Frampton and stuff wearing your stuff like yeah 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 that's yeah. Sick. yeah like different boxers footballers like going from Northern Ireland to the mainland uh, reality TV stars MMA like actors like even gangsters in England it's up to yeah. no good to have big social media following like it's like you know it's a brand for you know it's not just one type of who is type the, of guy. who's been the person that you've either had in the store like being in contact with even with like the DJK brand or like what the, the other like the the other stuff that you said like the other brands you sell was there anybody that you've became in contact with you're like holy moly like I was not expecting this I believe in like with, with two footballers there with an AC Milan footballer and a Monaco footballer uh-huh. it was wearing it recently so one of the models we use is Portuguese uh-huh. he then reached out to the two football clubs sent us the addresses oh, he yeah. was sitting in a private chat sitting with his Monaco tracksuit on we are cap on and oh, you're sort of looking at it. but oh, see on the flip side of that what do you say that's that's great and it's fantastic yeah. and it'll keep going and it's brilliant yeah. but see like you or you the random guy like i got a photo today the women's northern ireland football match was on last uh-huh. night i got a photo of a kid wearing a djk cap in the crowd yeah that yeah. means more to me yeah because yeah. it's relatable because that's your bread and butter that's your yeah. you know your guy on the street that's just like buying it because he's going fuck that's cool you know want to be part of and i think as well like literally the djk brand has been going 
like since December 21. So we're now in April. So January, February, March, April, so four months. Mm-hmm. No, 120 days. That's all it is. So, but in my head, because of the momentum and what we've done with the designer business, it's easy to go, fuck, you know, we need to yeah. be yeah. faster, faster, yeah. you know, get, get this thing going. But, you know, it is going to take time. But where we're set at the minute, like, the interest, the intrigue, you know, the people that's wanting to work with us, the sort of the doors that's opening, you know, mm. it's it's only going one way and yeah. it's exciting. It's not like a job, you know. Yeah. I think a designer it's business. Passion, like. Ah, yeah, because you, you've so much input, you know, there's that many things that get scrapped and we're designing stuff. There's that many things that's left on the shelf because, oh, it's not good enough, you know, it doesn't pass the test, you know, don't really believe in it. And then we show a few people, no, I don't know. And yeah. then there's other yeah. things, it's like, no, we have to make that, you know, it's like, get that through production you know get it ready yeah yeah i think the best place uh, leading on and i think we'll we'll end it here is obviously you're saying about like the kid in the football match and stuff like wearing the hat and how like much that means to you i suppose and it's a good it's a good sort of place to leave this because you've done so much and because like even at the moment like you're juggling a lot like in terms of the business and and now the brand and stuff will there ever come a time or what will be that time where you would look at things and go like say 30 40 years from now we'd be like i did it like what would be that point where you'd be like right i can maybe hand this over to someone else i've achieved what i want to achieve like what is that point or is it more the journey and less about the destination or what yeah i don't think for me personally i think when you put your name on something so whether it was the business was originally David James Carr and then it sort of rebranded the DJK. You know, it's like when you put your name on it, that's that's you for life. I don't think yeah. like I'm like people say, like, would you ever if you get the a certain number in their head, would you retire or whatever? I don't I could never sit about, could never take my yeah. foot off the gas. It's like what's next, what's next? And then you reach one peak and it's like, right, hope the next one. It's like you know You wanna leave a legacy? <laughs> just, honestly because yeah, i think no. there's so much opportunity yeah. because if i says to you open a coffee shop you know will you look around there's fucking 40 coffee shops within yeah. so many mile radius what start makes... a clothing brand yeah. like i know you mentioned outside in but it's a completely different concept yeah, yeah. you know obviously the homelessness yeah. side like you know the cause of it yeah whereas we're like a fashion brand yeah but on the level we're trying to do it is like the scope and the you know the opportunity is so great that we want to compete with Represent. We yeah. want to compete with the bigger brands. We've gained all the knowledge from selling the luxury brands. So it's like putting all that into play and going like, well, the world's your oyster. And I yeah. think the support we've had from Belfast, people in Northern Ireland, you know, our current customers across everywhere else is like, just gives you that fire and ammunition just to keep yeah. going and keep trying to build something because there is going to be roadblocks. There is, like I'm telling you, like there's problems like you're trying to sell a winter jacket in the spring, summer. Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> Good job you live in Northern Ireland. Though. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And like, you know, maybe over-ordering things or yeah. like problems with factories, delays, like, you know, just all th- things happen. But in yeah. daily life, like, you, ah, you can wake up and go to a job you hate. So it's like, as I say, like we, we, in the officer, I came straight here after work. Like I had a great day in work. So yeah. it's not, a, it's, I'm not getting up in the morning dreading yeah going to work i love going to work because yeah. it's not work it's like yeah. a fucking it's like a like a it's your life it's a lifestyle it's yeah. like it's, it's great all these different guys coming in like loving the product mm. and then some of them don't like a product so then yeah. you're taking feedback what do you not like about it what, what about the fit what about this so i like my back prints i like this like represent do this like it's yeah. like you're trying to get all them pieces of the puzzle oh, and, and them put together. it together and try and get the best sort of mm-hmm. you know outcome mm-hmm. well thank you very much for coming on no problem and at all we'll definitely we'll keep in touch and stuff and if anybody's listening right now the best place to find you the brand is obviously instagram yeah djk or yes yes um, so sorry, DJK you've, like three, you've like three instagrams uh, i have you? my personal instagram i have the store instagram and then with the brand instagram yeah but they're all sort of in there just like go anyway. follow yeah uh, probably find you and then that'll be a yeah. hub for everything else or tiktok yeah tiktok's TikTok. decent yeah right. sweet and youtube as well YouTube. Just all the places. And the website. Just go, all, just go all, and, and yeah, Twitter and Facebook yeah, and yeah, Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, thank you very much for coming on yes, and no all the best. And if you haven't bought a coat, go buy a coat now. They'll be, uh, like, be out when this yeah. goes out. They'll always be, they'll always be another winter coming around the corner now, won't they? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh sweet. They are sick. Now you can pick. What one is like each or swap them or whatever? Thank you. Thank you.
Det er ikke så meget vandet så meget eller. These are fast. Now all your guests bring your guests. No, no. Play a set of bar now. So if you're watching this and you're coming on. <laughs> I'm just hoping to thank you very much. Thank you. We'll do a bit of modeling here and see what they're like. I, mean, uh, I have a big head, like. I see him. I hope it's not small. I've always won that hat as well with the wee, like, open back. Like, keep my, my hair, my head cool. Hold on the back. Hi, product of Belfast. Yeah. But that's, that's our slogan because we think, like, as I say, it's just like championing. You know, if if you if you buy a T-shirt says Soho or London or yeah. fucking Manchester, like oh that's cool. Yeah. yeah. But why not make Belfast cool? You know what I mean? <laughs> you actually, you actually said that. We're looking for models at the minute. Jesus, I don't know if they do it all. Me, what all for you? No, but you can model the Bella Clavis. Nice. <laughs> He's down, down the Thomas takes a hat off and chucks out the window. Just. Yeah. Fucking hats like Wait, I'll, I'll go out and go with fucking hats of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big head, so I didn't want to adjust it before I got along. I like that. I like the back of your hat. What does it say? That's sick. It's cool, isn't it? That is cool, Bill. Love it. Thank you so much. Thomas. Yes, no problem. Thank go you. on, buy these hats, people. <laughs> <laughs> Sell them out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, very good. Good. No, I appreciate it.